Chris Saley. Uh, going along with the ownership and the pride in our product here, uh, not only when we build our boilers do we sign our names on them so we know that we built them, so if we they come back and we get our uh, problems drawn right to us. When we do the electrical systems and the electrical systems check, we also date them and sign our initials uh, so we know, if, again, if there's a problem with this system, it comes back here, it comes back to us. We take a lot of pride in our work and what we do here, as well as having this nice little diagram here, the sheet for the electrician. So in case there are any problems, the electrician knows which one, which wire is which and which one goes to which place. So what I'm looking at here is VR. There's somebody in this plant who's named VR. Yep. And then I'm looking at it, it says white is a neutral, green is a ground, black is a line power, white is a neutral, red is a primary pump, and it's all spelled out. Yeah. Boy, that's pretty simple. It's all spelled out. We also date the day that it was tested right there. And then going along with this, you know, when you buy the boiler, you get instruction manuals and setup manuals that have more detailed uh, diagrams of this. You can actually see the pictures of where all the wires are supposed to go. So we make it nice and easy for the electrician and nice and easy for a journeyman electrician at home to be able to take, a, to take the hood off here and uh, figure things out. See this is jumper. This is jumper here from the factory uh, for quality testing. This is where we would actually uh, insert the Honeywell L4006A Aquastat that we include as standard uh, package trip with our boilers. We don't force you to buy it separately. It's a standard package trip. Uh, that aquastat will be placed in the supply line and jumped right into this outlet here. And its purpose is again as a secondary safety. Should the electronics, uh, for whatever reason, we see this maybe half time, half a dozen times a year, lightning strike, power surge, something knocked out the electronic control, the mechanical aquastat, the mechanical aquastat, which would be set 10 degrees higher, then the digital uh, will take over at that point and cut power to just the fan while letting the pumps continue to run. That's very important, cutting the power to the fan, not the entire boiler. We're letting the pumps continue to run so we don't have a stratification of hot water that could lead to uh, system failures, hex meltdown, pressure relief valve, blow off, and everything's been thought out. Four yeah, different four safety systems. Safety layers, yep. Four different level safeties for a boiler. Now that is impressive. Most boilers that I know of don't have anywhere near that level of safety. No, and we back that up uh, not only with, because of our desires as a U.S. company to make sure our, we hold our customers' uh, safety a first and foremost priority, uh, we also back that up with our safety certifications, uh, which we'll talk about later on. Well, the fact that you throw in the Aquastat, you don't charge people extra for things that you feel should be there. For a $70 adder, it's worth it just to include it in a package for that peace of mind, Woody. Well, the other thing I heard you say is something about preheating. It sounds to me like there's efficiency levels that are reached before this thing goes into operation. Is that what's going on there? No, it certainly is. Um, remember, it's about uh, longevity, um, not only for the boiler, but also for your system. Um, key to any boiler performance, whether it's cast iron or steel, as we have here, uh, is anti-condensing. We do not want to condense acidic uh, flue gases back into the boiler. And that would happen with cold water returned back to the boiler. We want to keep this returned water coming back to our return at no less than 140 degrees. So a number of different ways to do that, uh, mixing valves, monoblocks, all kinds of stuff out there in the world. Uh, it's all good, but we decided to uh, come off right with our standard control platform into a two circulating pump uh, strategy array, which is very familiar for not only the homeowners, but for the contractors something to be simple and off the shelf should a pump need to be placed. Uh, so again, to uh, just run through the operation of those, uh, two pump strategy for our unit. First would be from the supply of the boiler back to the return, whether it's orientated this way, this way, this way, whatever. Uh, somewhere in the middle, we're going to put in this near boiler pump. From a cold start to 150 degrees, this uh, red white lead's gonna be energizing just the near boiler pump, getting the boiler, that massive refractory up to temperature, and then after 150 degrees is attained, we'll de-energize this pump and energize the pump to uh, carry energy off to the system. If we come back cold, we revert back to near boiler and the process continues back and forth. Again, it's about protecting the boiler and protecting your system. Wow, that is really impressive. So it's virtually impossible, the way that you guys have this thing set up, to mess it up. We try to take everything into consideration, Wendy. You better believe it. 
So if if we install this thing, it's going to stay at 140 degrees automatically. Once we get over that magic number, yes, it is absolutely. Wow, that is very impressive. We think so. Well, thank you, Mark. I really appreciate you guys, and I appreciate all the thought that you put into this boiler. Well, we appreciate you being out here today. Thank you. This is Woody from Obadiah's, folks. As you can see, these are the details that make the difference. This is why I'm here, trying to bring you the best products available. This is an American-made boiler. It will compete with any European boiler out there. The difference is it has American ingenuity, and it's built American tough. If you want a boiler that's going to last you, and a warranty that will back it, this is it right here.